I've gone live a little bit early. Because I'm ready to go. And this recipe is not going to take that long either. So, refresh my YouTubes. Recipe is not going to take that long either. Yep, we're live. And the same will be cooking. I'm just going to try and get a decent shot. I'm just heating up my pan. I'm just going to get straight on with it. If people join in, awesome sauce. And if not, this will be a very short live and easy for people to watch back later. So I'm just heating up my, um, it says to use a deep, a large deep frying pan. This is kind of the deepest thing I've got. So I'm hoping that it'll, um, everything's going to fit in because we're going to be putting like 500 grams of pasta in there. But this is a bolognese that you just make in one pot. I've never made anything like this before. So we're going to have a crack and see what it's like. First off, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of oil in the, or a little bit of oil, not a tiny bit, in the pan. And you want to heat it up too high. But if you use the cast iron stuff, just remember you always just go to medium. That is basically high for a, a cast iron pot. And they do take a little bit longer to warm up uh, as well. So when the oil starts to look like it's a little bit bubbly, I'll chuck the mints in. I hope everybody's well. I haven't been live for ages. I've had a pretty full on week, so uh, going live hasn't really been a priority this week. But I um, thought I'd just check this recipe out because it sounds so easy, and people do ask me to show really simple recipes. Um, the link is in the description, but essentially, all you're going to need is some beef mince or lamb, or if you're a vegan, there is a mince alternative you can use. We're going to be using some passata, some rigatoni pasta, um, some bocconcini and some basil, and then just a bit of oil, salt and pepper. That's it. Sounds too good to be true. Just chuck in a bit of mince and see if we've heated up. Yep, it's sizzling. So the recipe calls for 500 grams of mince. Um, I actually had this bag in the freezer and it's more like 400 grams, but there's more than enough. You don't have to be too precious with measurements. Still going to have plenty of meat in it. And we basically just want to brown that. Um, obviously, you can use your wooden spoon to break up any lumps. But basically when the minces change colour, it's about five minutes, it'll be cool. My one person who was hanging out with me has left, so it's just me in the shitty kitty kitchen. That's all right. People will come in when it's cooked, and then I'll do an ASMR. I'm not sure what's happening here. What's happening with YouTube's again? When it's cooked. Alrighty, that's on the move now. Ah, uh, click pause as opposed to turn the volume down. I was keen to, to, to see somebody pop in. I'd like to hear what people have been up to. I don't have a lot of exciting news. I went to the dentist again. I love having my teeth cleaned. It's the best feeling. Um, it's my nephew's 18th birthday on Monday. My sister and I are kind of not super struggling what to get him with. We could, he does travel a lot, so we're thinking of getting him a really nice leather, um, like carry-on sort of satchel or, a, you know, like with a really nice toiletry bag in it, something like that, but um, probably get him a gift card as well. Only turn 18 months. We can't give him grog because he's in a boarding house and grog is prohibited. Looks like it's just me. Hey, Ozzy. <laughs> Looks like it's just the two of us, mate. Um, this will be a good recipe for you, actually. It's really easy. We're making a bolognese in one pan. So I'm just cranking up the heat a little bit. So it's a bit over medium heat now. But if you were using a non-enamel, you could have it on high. How are you doing, Ozzy? What's up? 
I've got to say, though, I've got one person watching that I've got two thumbs up, so I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Oh, I was just reading about the COVID in uh, Sydney, New South Wales. Holy shit. Going up. I reckon they'll be by a 1,000 before Wednesday. Sucks. Yeah, no grog. No grog. We'll have a little tipple at dinner, but um, we're, going, we're taking him out to dinner on Monday night as well. But, yeah, poor kid can't have any grog because he's in a boarding house. So that means it isn't far off from being ground all over. You don't want to cook it so that it ends up being crispy or anything like that. But, yeah, I thought this recipe sounded really simple, really, like, fresh and yummy. Um, and people do say to try to do some basic kind of stuff, easy stuff, and I've never, ever done bolognese in one pan. I'll make my the bolognese I normally make one day. It's a recipe I've been making since I was a uni student. Um, but I'm keen to see what this is like. It's so freaking easy. Great weekend cooking this little dish. Now, the recipe doesn't have any seasoning in it, but that's not how Tori cooks. So, hey, Joey. You did scare me. Hey, Serenity B. It's beautiful, isn't it? I was given that for my 50th birthday by my friends at Andy's. Yeah, Sydney does look horrendous. Um, so, yeah, the recipe doesn't call for seasoning, but that's not how Tori cooks. So it's actually at this part of the cooking I'm adding some salt, quite a bit of salt, and some pepper. And when I serve it up, I'll chuck more pepper on top. But, yeah, things aren't looking good in Sydney, and there they all are protesting. Oh, and masks just all hanging out together. I wonder why they're going to be in lockdown forever because it's not, like nine weeks or something. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm happy to be on this little island, I've got to say. Although our Premier spoke yesterday about what sort of things will happen if it arrives here, if Delta makes it to Tassie. Pretty full on. Pretty full on. Okay, so I had a little bit of um, cherry tomato passata left over from something I made. I can't actually see my phone, but um, I'm just going to chuck that in and use that up. I can't even think what I made, but it was, oh, it was when I made the base for that um, Brussels sprout pizza that freaked a lot of people out last weekend. Yeah, that pizza was so good. You really should try it. So I'm just using up the cherry tomato. And you need about, um, what do we need? About 500 grams, I think, of passata. So I'm going to, that was about, I don't know. I'm just going to chuck a bit more in. <laughs> Can't get too precious around here. There are a thousand protesters in Melbourne. Hi, Francesca. Oh, wait, I've got to give you groovers. Wrenches. See, everyone's matchy matchy. Serenity B and Joey. Oh no, hang on. I just gave, I made you a mod Serenity B and then I removed it because I went to Joey's. There you go, you can all have a wrench. <laughs> um, so I'll just check a little bit more. It says 500. This bottle's a 750 bottle. There we go, I think that's pretty close to 500. And here's the weird thing, guys. We're going to add 500 grams of rigatoni. For those of you who don't know, rigatoni is this pasta. It's the, hang on, that one, the big sort of tubes. Oops, where's the camera? The tubes. We're going to just chuck the whole thing in. This is so weird. One pimp today back into all Victoria's in lockdown now, number seven. Yikes. Yeah, what was it? It was it's been over two hundred days or something now when you add up all of your lockdowns. Pretty crazy. 
Um, you don't have to go too crazy with mixing this up because the other thing we're going to add is a litre of water. Hopefully it's all going to fit. It's going to be snug, I reckon. Yep, it's a snug fit. I'll give it a little bit of a mix together now. This is the weirdest bolognese I've ever made. But if it works, how easy is this? You'll all be going, oh, my God, and my kids love it. You've changed my life, Tori. That's what's going to happen. I'll be able to chat for ages in a minute because we're going to be simmering the fuck out of this for a while. Um, we just need to bring it to the boil and then we're going to drop it down to a medium-low heat, whack the lid on and let it cook for about 15 minutes until the pasta is cooked. Yesterday, the cops had most freeways packed with cop cars, like 20 pulling everyone up, making sure they're doing the right thing. Isn't it? I mean, look, I'm glad the cops are getting out and about and doing that, but isn't it sad that they need that many cops to check that people are doing the right thing? Like, seriously, what's wrong with human beings? 20 each spot. Far out. Well, there you go. Watching you cook, Tori, I'm not getting door dash. <laughs> it's your favourite pasta shape, Francesca. I like it too. I like rigatoni because it gets, um, the sauce all sort of gets caught in the middle of it and it's yummy. Is this how your mum made it, Joey? There you go. Yeah, you're all blue now. I've made you all blue. Smells good. Yeah, look, they should have done it earlier. But, you know. Everybody hopes people will do the right thing. <laughs> oh, what a mistake. God, I'm sick of listening to the anti-vaxxers on YouTube. Selfish bastards. I don't know if this dude would strike my channel or not, but I guess if I stop and start it um, and, you know, comment, it's fair use. But some of you know I love Dr. Duck Vuong, who's a... Um, bariatric, he's well, now retired, but and he's only young, but a, re a retired bariatric surgeon in the States who I've been watching since the COVID's kicked in last year. And he's just, I mean, he says fuck a lot, which is why I like him, but um, he did a res response to people that keep saying my body, my choice, and it's really good. Well, God, Joey, some of the rumours that, are, oh, sorry, sorry, to be about the army, some of the, um, a friend of mine in the States yesterday contacted me to say she was listening to, like, talkback radio where she lives and asking if all the stuff was true. And one of the things that she was told was it's already martial law in Australia. Um, and that they're pepper spraying people. Um, there was some other thing too. I was like, I don't even know. I don't know. Can you buy pepper spray in Australia? I've never seen it. Where the hell do you buy it? There's like 50 ADF deployed to the Hunter. It was weird before actually a plane flew in over, like I live on a flight path. I mean, it sort of doesn't fly over, straight over my house, but it goes around the front and I get to three planes. And it was one of those... Um, what are those big, ugly Her uh, Hercules? It was a Hercules flying in. I was thinking, oh, God, what's that all about? We are living in the Stephen King novel, Joey. Do you love the dock, Francesca? Well, this, well, this when we put the lid on and simmer it, I might even share that video and we can have a chat about it because the people, the people that are very anti getting vaccinated don't have one compelling argument about it. Like, they're completely missing the point. They often say it's new and untested and people don't know what the long-term effects of it are going to be. It's not new. They have, they can't even fucking sit there and Google and look at where this vaccine's come from. It's not that hard, you know, and... Oh, it's a brand new vaccine. No, have you heard of SARS, motherfuckers? Um, another one is 
you could hear them complaining about the vaccinations, but then they are whinging about how people who aren't vaccinated won't be able to go to other places. He is blunt with his facts. I love him too. I'll show. I will show them my body, my choice. But did you see that one, Francesca? Um, I can't. I can't. Oh, wait, another person was saying today. Delta's only a couple of months old. How do they know the vaccine is going to stop you catching it? it the vaccine's never going to stop anyone catching it. It's about reducing your symptoms and hopefully keeping you out of hospital. I mean, the, the people that have died in Australia in the last few weeks from COVID, nearly all of them, as far as I'm aware, haven't been vaccinated. What did I get? In terms of the vax, I'm only one shot in. I'm at my second shot's next Sunday, I think. Um, Pfizer. Yeah, no one questions what's in the flu drug. Hell, party drugs, that's the other thing, sorry. It's kind of ironic when there's some fucking anti-vaxxer on YouTube who's also had a you know an addiction to a chemical substance. Um, I mean, for me, I... I don't want to find out what life is like with COVID and the Delta variant if you haven't had a shot, you know. Like, I'm not curious enough to know. I'm prepared to have the vaccination and hopefully it'll keep me out of hospital. But also, I want to be out and about in the community and not a risk to other people. Right, so the, the source is now coming to the boil. So I'm just going to make sure there's nothing stuck on the bottom before we whack the lid on it and let it simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. can't believe um, you said this is how your mum used to make it, Joey. I've never, ever either made it this way myself or seen anyone make it this way. I was curious. I do want to get a good boiler happening before I turn it down. Abby says not to not get AstraZeneca. Um, my sister, she got the AstraZeneca and, I mean, she was fine after the first shot and I say if you're, after, if you're okay after the first shot with that, you'll be fine. That like you're not, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I never questioned all the crap that I put into my body as a younger girl. But I just think it in terms of, you know, looking at how these businesses are really hurting in Sydney and so many small businesses in particular are closing down. And I was listening to some small business owners in Melbourne talking about, you know, how they are pretty much screwed as well. And the point of being vaccinated is these lockdowns, if they get a high enough percentage, these lockdowns are going to stop. And I don't know, I mean, we can't beat this virus, it's a prick, right? But we can certainly do things to try to take a step back towards, not that life's ever going to be the same again, but, you know, let's go back and hopefully to at least supporting all of our local businesses and our economy and all of that sort of stuff. You've never seen Parson Man this way either. You had six mouths to feed in your family, Joey. I mean, my mum made us pasta, but she used to cook the pasta in one pot and make the sauce in the other, which is pretty much how I do my pasta. What about you guys with the vaccinations? I've had... No issues. I mean, I had a sore arm for a few days after my Pfizer, but you expect that. Like, you've been shot in the arm with a needle, you know. Um, one of my friends who's quite a bit younger than me had a pretty bad reaction to the second one, but she's got fibromyalgia and a few other health issues, and it just inflamed it. Like, it just made it, you know, a little bit worse than it usually is. But, I mean, a few days later, she was back to her bouncy self. Okay. I'm going to whack on the lid. 
and let that simmer for 15, 20 minutes or until the pasta is al dente. I'm sorry, 10 to 15 minutes. Actually, I better um, put a timer on so I always get sidetracked. Oh, I can't screen share Dr. Duck Wong because I'm filming it on my phone. I'm reading chat on my laptop. I don't know if the microphone on my phone will. Now, there's four of you watching, so one of you needs to give me a thumbs up so that I've got four thumbs for four people watching. Just dreaming of life before COVID, how we took things for granted. I asked about the VAX, told to register next month when more are available. What a joke. Yeah, but then I also heard Daniel Andrews saying there's like 80,000 appointments this week and they're not booked yet. Oh, this is a Le Creuset. It's a beautiful French. Like this stuff is so expensive, but once you've got it, you will have it for life. Um, and I've... I've got a nice little collection of Le Creuset. My friends, the Andes, have got three times as many pots and stuff. But, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's one of those things that you save up for, but I use it. This gets used every week, like several times. Um, it's If I need to use a frying pan, I use it. Any kind of one pot in the oven dish, I use it. Um if you're watching Le Crusade, you want to sponsor me in, in goods. Yeah, the Andes. You're feeding butthead and listening. <laughs> so while the lid is on, 10 to 15 minutes, um, we're going to have, like, the pasta will end up being al dente and the sauce is going to thicken as well. Hey, Le, hey, hey, Le Crusade. Hi, Mandy Ball. Yes, it is guaranteed for life. And none of my Le Crusade stuff... Um, has required replacing. I've got two of my mum's little saucepans that are, I mean, frying pans that are so battered and look like shit, and the stuff you cook in them is amazing. God, it's not even 6 o'clock. I'll be having dinner at 6.05. Mum had Bessemer wear back in the day. Oh, God, Joe! I wish I still had my mum's calling wear. I don't know what happened to it. I think she got rid of it while um, when I was living in Adelaide. Because if when we were acting out mum and dad's house, there's no way I wouldn't have taken the calling wear. I loved it. Love, love, loved it. Those white baking dishes with the glass lids and the flat blue flowers on the side. Hey, Raven. That's air. We're making a one pot bolognese. Like, it's the easiest bolognese. There's no onion. There's no garlic. It's literally, we just put a bit of mince with a bit of oil, cook that up. Then we chucked in some passata or pasta sauce, um, some rigatoni pasta, some salt and pepper, and a litre of water. And that's it. And we're just going to dress it with some bocconcini and some basil. You only just recently saw how to store them probably. My drop mine. Well, are they stackable? I think mum used to stack hers. Is that what you mean? I reckon I'm going to put some palmy on this too. Like it does have bocconcini, but you can't have a bolognese without a little bit of palmy, can you? I can't. <laughs> More cheese, the better. Uh, 
that. But some of that yummy pecorino parmesan combo that I used on my pizza. You stack them. Nice. Um, I've got some smoked salmon. Five minutes to go. I've got some, before I check, I've got some smoked salmon I need to use up in the next week, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to make, show you guys how to make the most, if you're into smoked salmon or hot smoked salmon, it's the easiest dip around. It's so yummy. And I quite like having a bit of dip. So you take dip with some, you know, celery and carrots or some little bickies or whatever to work as a snack. I was so ready to be, I know. But, but this is me responding to requests to cook something really simple. Um, I'll do my version of spaghetti bolognese, which has masses of onion, garlic and red wine in it. Another night. <laughs> this is literally, it's not very exciting viewing just the pan, but I'll try. I did set my kitchen up. No, Mel, hello. Oh, Mel, you'll love this recipe. You're one of the ones that said some of your cooking's a bit too fancy, Tours. So we're doing a bolognese all in one pot. We've just cooked a bit of mince and some oil. Um, then we added some passata, um, 500 grams of rigatoni pasta, a litre of water, some salt and pepper, and now it's all bubbling away in there for 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Till the pasta is al dente and the sauce is thickened. It's not fancy. This is easy. This is I tried. I chose this because I thought this has to be one of the easiest dishes around. You still think it's fancy? All right. Next time I go live, I'm doing the Jamaican toast. Simple is good. I reckon this would be quite a nice weeknight dish too if you haven't sort of organise what you're doing for dinner and you get home from work and you're a bit knackered, something like this just to chuck on doesn't take long. And while it's at this point, like while it's doing the 10, 15 minutes of cooking away, you can go and put your jammies on, settle in for the night. This spaghetti sauce is out of a jar. Like it's literally... Um, Minced meat, a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, passata, you know, pasta sauce out of a jar. Um, mind you, I did use up the cherry tomato passata. That is a bit fancy. I like it because it comes in a stubby, like a stubby sauce. Um, and then some pasta. Like it's the fanciest thing is the bocconcini. But I grab this little. Um, tub of coles bock and cheney for like oh shit i'd opened it earlier it's dribbling for like three three bucks the bock and cheney jizz off my bench this is a bit grubby because i've been wiping the bench but look at this cute little sponge my sister gave me in honor of sunny who bit her on the nose as a way of saying thank you she drew blood. Oh, I just noticed the Bocconcini's got a gold medal. Well, it's not fancy, man. It's just a cheese you don't normally use. But, yes, Sunny, um, my sister picked her up, and Sunny doesn't like being picked up. Uh, but Sunny also doesn't give you a warning that she's about to attack. So, yeah, I did survive the night and eat me in my sleep. She's on my bed at the moment, and then when I head down to go to bed, she'll come out and sleep in one of the, one of the soft furnishings in the living room. Sunny, I know she's gorgeous. And even when she drew blood on the end of my sister's nose, my sister still loves her. Of course, he's sponge. <laughs> It's a really cool one. Like, you get it. They last for about six months. You can wash them and they're biodegradable. It's one of those, you know, environmentally friendly sponges. 
bit of steam coming out of the Le Creuset. Bit of action going on inside by the sounds of it. But yeah, I, I really don't think this could be any easier, this dish. Like, really. Well, that's the 10 minute signal. So we're going to take the lid off and have a looky. There's a bit of action going on there. Let's have a little bit of a mix. Unstick a few things. I'll take a piece of pasta out and see if it's out there. The sauce hasn't really thickened, though. I don't know how a sauce would thicken when you've got a lid on, personally. And it's not like there was anything in there to help thicken it. So I'd... I might just keep it cooking unless it passes out then, Tony. Put the lid off. To let it reduce a little, you know. Let's take a bit of... doesn't feel al dente to me yet. Still got a few more minutes to go. Probably another five. Yeah, not that they're much yummy. Because this is so easy and it's delicious. I'm a big fan of the one pot cooking. And I'm going to go and visit my friend Squatty tomorrow. So I'll take a tub of this down for him too. Or a couple of containers. Love it. He doesn't like super fancy food. Even though Melbourne Mel says it's fancy because it's got Bock and Cheaty going in it shortly. But yeah, I'm ignoring their recipe and using my own cooking instincts. I've taken kept the lid off. I'd like the sauce to reduce a little bit, but Hey Planet Sunshine. You're singing Fancy by Iggy Azalea. I don't know how that song goes. Can anyone hear the kookaburra? Probably not. I don't know if my phone's picking it up. There's one right outside my window laughing at me. It's probably fat, so. That's the name of my local kookaburra. I named him. It does look yummy, Mandy, and it's going to look yummier in a minute. It's going to look prettier. I might get me a little bowl so I can plate up. Not quite ready for plating up, but oh, your mum did it with bacon. Yeah, bacon would be lovely in it too. I've, I have got some bacon, but it's in the freezer, so I'm not going to chuck any bacon in. I'm doing this true to the recipe. This recipe, by the way, is out of the free magazine you get at Coles supermarkets. So they do a lot of friendly, family friendly cooking. I was going to do a different dish um, originally that was another rigatoni. It was like a pasta bake. But it was one of those, I mean, this is the problem with the family cooking is it was one of those ones that hid a lot of veggies in it. And I don't actually like eating dishes where they've hidden, you know, a carrot and celery and shit like that. So I was like, oh, fuck, what else can I make? And I flicked back through and came across the one pot bolognese. So easy. Hello, Anya. Oh, look at you with your lovely greeting. Oh, what's going on? We had a bit of bit of camera connection happening then. It's the worst thing about where the kitchen is, the reception is the worst in the house. <laughs> we could 
we're making a very easy one pot bolognese onion. Just waiting for the pasta to get a bit more al dente. Mustn't be far off now. The sauce has thickened a little bit too, and it's going to get a bit thicker when we chuck in the bocconcini, which isn't fancy. Let me try another piece of pasta. So, yeah, thoughts are going out to everyone in Sydney, and especially to all the people that are doing the right thing, that are just getting fucked over by all the people who aren't. And sorry to see things are turning bad in Melbourne too. Mm, still not quite old, I? It's really yummy though, and it doesn't even have the fancy stuff yet, Mel Mel. We may even go live a bit later. I feel like a, you know, hang out, chat, watch some stuff. Since Sunny no longer demands I watch telly with her so she can get a head massage, she seems to be all about sleeping a lot. Still gets the zoomies and carries on like a pork shot, but. I took this picture the lousy day I had and went kayaking. Oh, how was the kayaking? A flock of geese or ducks surrounded you. Oh, they're gorgeous. It is. It's really yummy. I mean, it's bizarre because it's just a pot of pasta. Yeah, I will go live. I'll go live because I think, you know, there's other people in lockdown. I mean, I'll go live a bit later, though. Like, I'm thinking sort of 9.30-ish. Does that work for you, Francesca? got to be close got to be close I'll put the lid back on for a couple of minutes and then we'll be good to go oh that lid's still really hot <coughs> yeah I'll go live why not we can all just hang out and talk about shit we can watch some that's fab for you. Awesome. We can watch some things, have a few laughs. I'll be able to play that Dr. Duck Bravo though. I'm not playing it for people who should be watching it. But when I hear these ignoramuses, like, you know, crapping on about why they're not taking the or getting the vaccine, it's like if they had a compelling argument, you know, if they've thought it through, and I understand there are people that you know, I mean, a compromise or whatever, and can't have it. But I just I keep listening to stories from all these small business owners who are going to go under pretty quickly. It's amazing they've managed to survive as long as this. And if we all, you know, the majority of Australians get vaccinated, these businesses are going to be able to stay open and. You know, these people that haven't made any money for months and months and months. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I want to do it. I'm, it's it's not just, it's not a, it's not a my body, my choice thing. This is about our communities, you know. Yeah, this is a beautiful pot. I know it was my, one of my 50th birthday presents. I love it. You know nothing of you drama, YouTube drama. Neither do I. Wouldn't have a clue. Can't imagine anything's changed. Did any of you see um, Brown Eyed Girls commentary about some of the drama people? No, oh, fucking cracked me up. She's awesome. She said what most people think <laughs> was good. She has good value. I haven't really watched her before. I think it was Wendy V who put up a clip of her and it was like, good on her. Because you know if you speak up, up about stuff on the YouTubes, you're putting a target on your back, which is why so many people just don't say anything. I've been going to the gym every day. I did a great class today. Um, it's, it's a bike class, 
Um, it's this dude called Les Mills, and you go on these sort of like virtual bike rides. So today we rode our bikes up to this pinnacle, and it was absolutely cool. Like it had the best music and all the graphics, and the people in the class were fantastic, and it doesn't need an instructor. So you just sort of get on your bike and away you go, and you can really push it. Like he pushes you, the guy on the screen, his voice. Um, it was really cool. Loved it. Loved it. So, you know, it's nice change because I'm normally in the gym bit doing my little weights um, routine. <laughs> so it was fun to get on the bikes and ride. All right. Are you ready, Rigatoni? It's got to be done. It's looking pretty cool to me when it's that support. Perfect. Michelle Dante, I saw a little bit of crunch, not crunch, but bite to it. Um, now, we've got a little tub of bocconcini. You can get little cherry-sized ones, which this recipe actually says to use, but I'm just going to tear the, the bigger balls up. And you want to put about a quarter of the tub in now. And you literally just tear up the balls. Nothing like shredding <laughs> some balls. And it's a 210 gram tub. You're using the whole tub. And then we just give that a bit of a, I'll just wash my hands. We're playing with balls. I'm going to turn the heat off because it's pretty much cooked and just mix it through, let that bocconcini start to melt and it gets all stringy and gluggy and delicious. don't know if you guys can see it starting to get a bit melty and stringy, but, yeah, there's going to be these yummy sort of blobs of melty cheese throughout. Bocconcini is in water, so you do want to drain it. You don't want the water in your dish as well. Um, and that's basically it. We just have to plate up now, which is great because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. It's definitely thicker. I don't know if this is still in the screen or not. Hang on. So to, whoa, look at that. See, look at that stringy fucking chainy ball. <laughs> there's a big, there's lots of stringy bucking chainy. Oh, yes. One more little bit. Holy shit. That fucking chainy. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that juicy, blobby, stringy, cheesy goodness. Oh, my God. All right, get in there. Get in the bowl. Crikey. All right, it's a bit messy to play it up, but it's fun. I'm just going to take that dish away, though, because I want to finish plating up. Oh, I'll the rest of the table. back, guys. And to finish up, um, I don't want to put it on that element. Hang on, can I turn that around a little bit? All right. So to plate up, hi, Anne Marie. 
You could definitely use chicken. Definitely. Um, just shred a little bit more of a bocconcini ball to go on top. Save the rest for next time you have leftovers. And then add some fresh basil. Some yummy fresh basil leaves. Whoops. Yum. I love basil, so I'm going nuts, but you put on whatever you want. Oh, yes. And then even though there's a lot of bocconcini in it, I am going to sprinkle a little bit of um, parmesan and pecorino onto the top as well because I'm a bit of a cheese nut. And lastly, some cracked pepper. And a little sprinkle of salt. And that's it, guys. Dinner is served. How good does that look? How easy was that? Seriously. So friggin' easy. Yes, it might be a bit fancy because it's got bocconcini, but it's a pretty cheap dish too. The magazine used to say how much it costs per serve. Does it still do that? No, it's just got the um, the health rating now. So I'm going to do a little taste. Bit of pasta, bit of bok bok, bit of basil. Oh my god, it's so good! It's ten out of ten again. That is ridiculously easy. Um, I want to get a bit with meat as well, and you've got these big blobs of chewy bok and chewy chini. Yum. Yeah, it's really good, guys, and um, yummy enough for grown-ups, but kids would dig it too because there's nothing spicy or anything like that. I mean, I was one of those kids that loved spice, but mm, that was so ridiculously easy. Hey, Veruca. Hey, Mama, you're waiting for Nurofen to kick in. We'll go and grab some bock and cheese. <laughs> mm. Cheese is life. It is. You don't need the parmesan and pecorino. That's just me being a cheese pig. But um, because the bock and cheese, there's a lot of bock and cheese through it, and then you've got these other little bits on top. It's great, guys. I give it a ten out of ten. But truly, that's so good and so easy. I'm going to save this recipe into my book of favourites because some nights I get home and I'm like, fuck, I'd love bolognese, but I don't have time to, like, make the sauce and let it sit there and simmer and get all the flavours through it. So I end up making something else. But now that I know I can whip up some bolognese all in one pot so I've only got like one pot the jug that I had the liter of water and the bowl that I had the mince in that's all I've got and it's a wooden spoon and it's too easy so I'm going to go live again a bit later it'll be 9 nine thirty Australian Eastern Standard Time we'll just go live and hang out we'll watch some stuff try and entertain some of you guys who are in lockdown and have a few laughs. But thank you so much for everyone um, for hanging out. I've still only got three thumbs up. Guys, come on. That was legendary. <laughs> as far as a quick live goes, that's pretty good. 49 minutes. Oh, a pop.
Oh, six thumbs up. Wicked. Um, it'll kick off at like um, you're three hours behind, I think, Melmo. So it'll be like six thirty for you. But I'm planning on being live for a while, so come and hang when you can. Because it's probably like right in the middle of dinner time for you, I would imagine. Oh, seven thumbs up. This is ridiculously easy. There's no garlic, no onion, no red wine. Like, it's literally, I'll just run through the, the recipe link is in the description. But actually, Mama, if you, I don't know what shop you're going to. Um, but if you're going to Coles, it's in the, the free magazine you get at Coles. This is the one that's out at the moment. And it's on page... 58. Hey, look. <laughs> Who did it better? Is, that is more tomato-y. It's redder. I probably could have put some tomato paste in, but, you know. Um, guys, it's really good, though. And, yeah, the link's in the description. But if you just want to whip up something that tastes like a really good spaghetti bolognese, this does, even though it's missing all of those other things. And if any Italians are watching me and think that this is sacrilege, I apologise. But I have delivered a very simple, quick, fun and delicious recipe and it's also really budget-friendly too. It's something the whole family will love. See you, Aussie. See you soon, everyone. I agree. And um, you can throw McDonald's at him. Hey, whatever it takes, kiddo. Um, you're a top mother if you're giving him food that he'll eat, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. Yum, yum. Up your bum. This rocks. 10 out of 10. I'm going to see you guys all in about three hours. Until then, stay groovy, everyone. I'm going to go and finish this. I just want to devour it like an absolute pig. It's rocks. I love you guys. See you a bit later on. <laughs> End live now. End.